Something that I couldn't include in the previous tutorial, part 1, is how exactly the texels are writing in each texture. To explain that I am back in the positions texture tutorial. If you remember here I am defining the format of the textures. And in this for loop, I am sampling the positions of the path. Then I pass the arrays to the textures and the textures are created automatically. The result is basically this texture. It's a single line because it's a 2K texture, so you can store 2K positions on a single line, but you could fill the whole texture on the Y axis. So the same thing happens in the Blender plugin. This function extracts the data into arrays and then these arrays are passed to the big vertex data here in this function. So I pass the data here and this function defines the format of the textures and receives the flat arrays as the pixels property. And that's it, as simple as that. I just want to remember where we left off in the first part. The second UV map and position textures were created. This way, we can read the positions with a vertex shader. I have to say that the first time I knew about vertex animation textures, it was complex to understand for me. Because of that, I think it's important that you watch before these two tutorials. The first one shows you that UV coordinates have different applications, and the second tutorial explains how to create and read textures in a particle shader. It's simpler than the vertex shader, so the concepts of reading and writing are a bit simpler and easier to understand in my opinion. Now, here we are in Godot, and here is the shader working. I am using 2000 particles in this case. This is the particle shader. In fact, there isn't much to explain because I already covered it in my grass particle tutorial. Basically, it's the same shader with minor modifications. It has the same structure to make the grid, and has two functions to make rotations and random numbers. This is the structure of the grid. Here I can change the size of the grid, and if I disable the random rotation, the characters or particles face the same direction. I'm going to leave random rotation on for the moment. This is the shader to read from the VAT texture generated in Blender. It's only 61 lines, but as I mentioned before, it can be a bit complex to understand, so let's make a script from zero, simpler and with less functions to explain the basic concepts of VAT textures. So I create a new shader. All particles have lost the color textures and animation textures. I can disable the random rotation too, but I like it. So I am going to delete the shader comments to start from scratch. I'm going to start declaring the albedo textures and the VAT texture. I will call it absolute map. And it's important in the import options to disable VRAM compress compression because it destroys the data in the textures. So I will choose VRAM uncompressed and compressed to disable. I'm going to do the same in the normal map texture. Now I will start with the albedo texture so that the character has color information. Now I will start with the frame time logic. First I get the current frame in the iframe variable, then the fractional part of the time in the variable a frame. Apart from that, I will declare a couple of variables, FPS and steep. I have to get the height of the texture to know the number of frames. And I am also going to use the mod function to grab the current frame in a range creating a kind of a loop. Now I'm going to explain this portion of the code because it's very important and it's a core concept in the vertex animation textures. So I am using the mod function to split the time variable into the integer part and the fractional part. 
high frame and a frame. So for example, in this value, I get the integer and I get the fraction. And this is another example too. Now I'm going to draw the path textures that come from Blender. And in the horizontal part is the vertices and the vertical part corresponds to the number of frames that I get with the text size function. Now I get the actual frame by applying the modulo function to enclose the value in the num frames range. Here I'm going to simulate that I am reading from the texture. I read once, I read again, and so on, creating an animation loop effect. Now let's look at the reading logic. I need to get the size of the texel in UV coordinates, so I just divide one by the number of frames. Now I have to move the read line, I mean the second special UV channel that we created in Blender, and I have to move it exactly in the middle of each texel to read it correctly. So I declare a texel center variable. Now I have to transform the integer value of the frame to UV coordinates in order to read the texture texels. So I will just multiply it by the texel size and I add texel center. With this, I get the correct read line offset using current frame. Now I read the absolute position x, y y that corresponds to Blender coordinates. So I assign it to vertex and the animation starts working. But as you can see, it runs at one frame per second. So I have to multiply by VPS. Also, it's using the shader cache. So it's not the correct animation texture. So I will assign it. And now this is the correct one. And now it's working fine. All right. So we have to multiply by the VPS and also divide by the sample variable that comes from Blender. So now I have the animation with the correct speed and I can increase the FPS if I want, but 30 FPS was the original value from Mixamo, where I extracted the original animation. Because of the stiff vibe, only one frame is sampled every five frames, which leaves the animation with cuts, obviously. But this greatly reduces the size of the animation texture. So let's create an interpolation effect between the frames to smooth the animation. If you remember, I applied this concept in the previous tutorial of fish animation on a path. So now I need to get the next texel and I'm going to do this by adding one to the current frame and applying again the mod function so I don't get out of the texture in the last frame. And the next step is to do an interpolation between the two positions, Texel, using the fractional variable a frame. So I read both Texels and do the interpolation and assign it to the absolute position of the vertices. Right here. This is the final result of the VAT texture reading with interpolation between texels to obtain a reduction and a smoothing effect. This resulting animation is quite similar to the original Mixamo animation. In my opinion, a steep of 5 is the right value, because if you increase more the steep, the interpolation will be incorrect. Now, this is my final shader, where I have some extra features in addition to the basic operation, like star frame, random frames, optional interpolation, Plus, it works with an array of textures, so you can select them randomly. So I am going to switch to my shader, and I am going to load all the textures, and I am going to turn on the random effects. Something that is missing is to correct the normals, but that is very simple. I am using the same variables and unpacking the normals this way and applying to the output variable. About the random, I am using instance custom in the vertex shader, and custom X in the particle shader. And this is the final result.
2,000 particles or characters with random animations. <laughs>